nothing but beautiful women. <laughs> That has been today's show with Bill, I, with the dash of Billy West. With the dash of Billy West. <laughs> I know. I can't complain about today. You can't. Um, you cannot complain. Well, you can't complain about any of our shows because we always have it's, fabulous guys. It's true, but th- I mean, our, our shows have been getting better and better. This one is, I don't know how we're going to top this one. I didn't know how we were going to top, uh, um, I can't think of the name, but Pearl Thompson right now. Yeah, but we from did the cure from the cure. From the I know friggin' cure. I know, but then it's just like, damn. We get Billy West, Jamie Pellington, Danny Stills coming to the show. I I still don't know why. We'll get down to the bottom of that uh, next. Um, and uh, now we have another guest, another lovely lady. Mm. How's it going? Oh, can you just? I forgot to do that. Can you just move the mic a little bit closer, closer to, to you? you? Oh, of course. I was going to do the little nerdy voiceover thing, but I mean, with Billy West here, it's... I know. <laughs> I don't want to do that thing. Even though he's not here anymore, it's like the spirit of Billy West. It's, it's just always going to be <laughs> exactly. here. Billy exactly. Billy West is in the room. He's fantastic. Um, Vita Gaffari. Gaffari. Like the safari, but with a g. So hot. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan, and I'm honored to be on the show for many reasons. You're Ooh. an extraordinary actress, the oh. whole scream queen thing going on. And, you know, through mutual friends, I've heard so much about you as an extraordinary person, and you are. I love the spread that you set out for us. Wasn't it amazing? Uh, I'm so still eating. So classy, and um, the half Middle Eastern thing I love. <laughs> <laughs> for the longest time, I thought you were half Persian. I'm like, I don't know. Is that possible? But half Egyptian. And, you know, I'm just honored to be on your show. And you've had the wonderful musicians here. Seven and Jack. Jack and Seven. Jack and Seven. Jack and Seven. It sounds like a drink, doesn't it? I know, it? right? It That's why yeah. we switched I, their name. Because yeah. dr- it's actually Jamie that. and Zach. But yeah. And, now of course, the amazing names. Billy West. I mean, what an honor. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was stepping into. But, wow. And you guys are just phenomenal yourselves. And so, I guess you're the turtle. You're yes. the tortoise and you're the hare. Yes. That's right. Because you're fast and you're supposed to be slow? Or yes. <laughs> well, you know, there's the Playboy reference. And oh, oh, know, duh. I'm <laughs> moment. And my favorite, the turtle always wins. So. The <laughs> turtle like, never wins. That's always a, a That's just a wins. story. The turtle is the <laughs> mascot <laughs> of my college, University of Maryland. So, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. You would have loved it there because everything is turtle out. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maryland, invite me over. Fly me out. Please. Um, they <laughs> should, right? Your football team, not so good. I know. I feel like it's <laughs> more for the basketball, the like the golden era of basketball. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a golden era of basketball before me with unfortunate passing of Len Bias. But right. I think it's just it's hard to get it going. You know, like when yeah. the tragedy happens, it's just hard to get. But yeah, not known for not known for that. True, true. So what brings you by uh, other than wanting to check out the show and uh, be well, on it? What do you mean what brings her by? I don't know. This woman this is, is a surprise so guest. F- she is not a surprise guest, Turtle. You know, you need to stop smoking crack. No. Um, crack <laughs> is delicious. I will not stop smoking. And for your information, I am wearing a bra and it's strapped. Really? I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, can, my, can I? My mama raised me right. <laughs> <laughs> I better do some in- investigating. This is our whole <laughs> no, no okay. bra Tuesday. Okay. Well, it's Wednesday now, right? I was like, I better do some special investigating. No, I'm like the, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'm like really nerdy. I would never do like a Lindsay Lohan thing with the car, getting in and out of the car. Like I would never do the, you know, that's just not my, more power to her, but I don't know. That's not my deal. That's true. That's true. I always have to wear a bra because I have very large breasts. That's Some true. of us are not so genetically blessed, like, but we still have to watch it. <laughs> I, I'm a fan of little breasts. Can, oh, I, can I just <laughs> throw that out there? Talk about moves. <laughs> I, I am. This guy. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Right? So, you know. So, you know, we had Billy West on, who is known for doing animation voices. You have an animated mov- movie as well. Yes. I mean, it's no Billy West material. or The material that you're doing sounds incredible. Well, I love your little kid voice. We need to all stop comparing ourselves to other things. You know what I mean? That's true. You know? Yes. That's true. But when you're in... When you're around people that you really admire, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a different he story. He doesn't have as many awards as you do. Oh, but he's Billy West. <laughs> <laughs> I love those impressions. My goodness. But um, I will tell you that it's been a great ride with Lovesick Fool. It was written, directed, and animated by Dominic Polsino. He's Emmy nominated. He's worked on The Simpsons, King of the Hill, Family Guy. So that was my first animated feature. It was my first animated project ever because normally for voiceover, I guess I have a straight shooter voice. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't really, I guess I do character voices, but I do mostly commercials, narration. I've done stuff in Farsi. I'm of Iranian descent. So 
I, I do like really boring stuff like mm -hmm. Best Buy recycles in Dubai and I'll do it in English <laughs> and I'll do it in Farsi. But let, let, let me hear that in Farsi real quick. Uh, شرکت Best Buy دوست داره کاغذای تمیز مصرف کنه. I guess that's what I, I feel, would say. Great. I feel way better now about Best Buy. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I know it's so sexier now. It was now. a great ride. Um, it's, it's wonderful just being in a booth. You know, you're a voiceover artist yourself with someone like Dominic to be directed by someone like him who's so talented. I mean, you know, as actors, we all think we're good. And as voiceover artists, mm -hmm. we all think we're good. But when you're in a booth being directed by somebody like that, it's a it's a great moment. Like it wasn't even on my bucket list to be to be in the company of him. And it's also Fred Willard, Lisa Kudrow and Janine Garofalo are in it. And I had a pretty good sizable role. I'm the dream girl in that. And I'm also voiced like a like a snobby tattooed uh, you know Silver Lake art gallery type woman so uh, it was interesting working on that there's some other great actors on that David Banks Renee Riviera some just amazing amazing talent but what really struck me about that is it's still going like it's 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 one at Topanga it's one at the LA Art House Film Festival it's screened at Ojai it just screened at the Holly Shorts at the Chinese Theater oh, nice. and that was an experience because Holly Shorts is a really big festival mm -hmm. and to have something that you did in the Chinese theater, it was like incredible. And the other films in that block were in, were unbelievable movies. So it was just, you know, a real honor to be a part of that and, you know, to experience that was incredible for me. So yeah, I was, it was, it was a deeply, um, I was really honored and I was very humbled because I, you know, you really see a great caliber of films there. I can't remember the name of the guy that it, that voices Porky Pig, but I know he's a contemporary of of this guy. I don't know why I'm, my mind is, I guess, Billy was such a force that yeah. I'm forgetting yeah. all my voiceover artists. Isn't but that Bill Farmer? I thought the Bill... God, it's the guy that well. does it. Well, I guess it's the guy that does it now that does mm -hmm. Porky Big. His whole thing is about being Jewish and, and, and voicing a pig. <laughs> That's his whole shtick. He even has a one-man show. God, why is the name escaping me? I like know mm. this guy and I run into him. But anyway, one of his films was in the block and he played like Angry Toilet Paper or something. And angry it, toilet it sounds very <laughs> gross, Fantastic. but it's very clever. Uh, so, toilet you know, Paper should be angry. It yeah, has yeah, like yeah, the yeah. worst job in the world. <laughs> yeah, or like, a, or like a stopper. Or I can't remember what it was, but people like him, like it, people like him voiced roles in movies that were in that block. I mean, it's great to go to these small festivals and, you know, be one of few animated films. But when you're in Holly Shorts, there's like four or five hundred movies. Right. So you, it's, I think that they really call through the creme de la creme and, I'm a journalist as well, so I saw a lot of my media friends there. So it was just a wonderful experience to be in a part of something that I can share with others that I know as a journalist. So it was an interesting, it's been an inter wild ride with that one. So Fantastic. You have another film that's that's at the, which, uh, Action on Film? Uh, yes, and that's where I met you. That's right. Yeah, shout out to Joe Williamson for the introduction. And he's like, and it was kind I of an impromptu him. introduction because he was talking about you all the time. And he's saying how amazing you are. And <laughs> we like, were walking well, I don't know this like, lady. Hey. And then I and then I saw, I saw you, and I'm like, oh my god, I have to I have to talk to you. And I really wanted I really want to see your House of Manson. You know, I'm obsessed with cults. And as a journalist, <laughs> That's not a good thing. Uh, no, 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 but not to join them, just like the dynamics, like yeah. why would Jonestown happen, or why would all this stuff happen? I remember being a little kid, and I don't know. My parents, I guess, were so busy being doing whatever they were doing. You know, was after the revolution, we had a lot of relatives staying with us and friends staying with us. People, you know, acclimating to this country, so they let me watch whatever I wanted. So I watched a Jonestown movie. They put oh it on gosh. reruns. I was like a little child, and then I saw uh, the uh, Helter Skelter. Right. I don't know why they let me see that, and I. I don't think they edit everything out on television like remember mm -hmm. when they would show movies like in the 80s and the 90s and they'd have these promos and it would say the movies <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you remember this yeah. maybe it's a mid-atlantic maryland thing but i remember i would see these movies and i'm i was fascinated like why somebody would join it especially like the van hooten character and you played the la bianca lady yeah so Rosemary and that LaBianca. was so tragic it was it was rough yeah my daughter uh, was there for the screening it was the first time that she had ever seen any of my horror films no and, kidding and actually house of manson is not a horror film it's a drama and uh she couldn't handle it she ran out of well of <laughs> course and she was outside crying um yeah, I felt really bad. But it's horrific and what happened. It was, it's yeah. very horrific and uh, very graphic. Um, 
I get a little choked up talking about it. Of course. And I don't mean to get you choked up, but this is a very interesting time because I think a lot of them want to get out. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, sorry. So I think it's very important that these movies are made to remind people. Right. No no matter how much they're redeemed, you did something really, really bad to some really nice people. So I can't even go to that restaurant. The last restaurant Shannon Tate was at was that Mexican restaurant, El Coyote. I get shivers down my spine just going there. I don't even know Sharon Tate. So... It was, a, yeah. it was a difficult uh, but interesting time of our history. So, you know, kudos to you on that one. Thank so. you so much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was a, a rough, uh, a rough uh, part for me um, because I was playing somebody who, you know, really had a life. So yes. I had to do all of the back research and there really wasn't anything that I could go on. So I was, you know, looking at autopsy reports and, you know, trying to figure out exactly, you know, how she would react to her husband, how she was feeling at that time. And... You know, the part is very short, but it's so pivotal. Very and pivotal so, to the whole know, story. And so I feel like a lot of the other people, that the victims, they kind of got glossed over by Sharon Tate. Mm-hmm. I mean, which is understandable. She's a star, but, you know, everybody right. else was important, too. So it would be nice to see the film and see you portray the backstory right. of that person. Yeah. For the nosy journalist in me. With the prequel. Me. <laughs> and Brandon Slagle and Devaney Pinn and, you know. Who I just Brett met recently at Shriekfest, who's lovely. Yeah, they yeah, did yeah, a yeah. fantastic job at this film. It looks gorgeous. Mm. Gorgeous. Mm, that's awesome. Turtle, you haven't seen it yet. No. Yeah, have you seen any of my films? Yes, you have. Yes. Um, I saw one of the nerds, Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds. You have to have like a Max Wasa movie night. No, <laughs> that could be a, that could be no. a Max Wasson movie month or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, don't, I think them. male actors do that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, yeah, I haven't gone out with many stuff. actors, but the ones that I have gone out with, they'd be like, "Oh, you know, we should have like a movie night of my movies." Like, it's like, girl, mm, like no. lady actresses <laughs> don't do that. We never even watch this stuff. Do you watch yourself? Never, because I have a broken nose, and it's like a Persian woman's Achilles heel. I mean, you're only half Middle Eastern, but you don't know, like, I'm obsessed with, like, the angles of my nose and what I look <laughs> no, like. No, you have no idea. And not that I'm vain, but, like, I just don't want to see it. I, I can handle hearing myself, but I don't know what it is about the visual. It's hard. Mm-hmm. But maybe yeah. men are more vain. Yeah, I mean, look bit. at male peacocks. They're more vain. You know, I, you know I think you might be right. Vain. I'm extremely vain. Especially in the selfie age. <laughs> you know yeah. what? I don't do selfies. I, I just live my life. You know, I think we... Discuss this earlier. Yes, and you haven't posted a picture in four months. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Of myself. But I know. post pictures of him constantly. Do you? So he's do you? out there. Yes. I, okay. You know, if you would visit our <laughs> our page, that'd be fantastic. Okay. So it's Possibly, all you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I do all the work. Market and direct. I do everything. I produce the show. Oh, turtle. Thanks, Max. Craft yeah. services. Yes, yeah. craft services that but, are very expensive. This is extremely complicated. Yes, what yes, I you're do. the engineer. We exactly. get it. Yeah, yes, oh, my yes. goodness. Come on. Let Throw me a freaking bone here. Let's, yeah. yeah, let's talk about the award that I just won. Yeah. <laughs> For producing. For producing. And you're, you're the first producer. woman, yeah. so big congrats on that yeah. one. Thank you so yeah, much. I wasn't I wasn't looking for a compliment there. I was just talking about that I pushed the buttons No, as well. no. It's impressive. It's, it's hard for us women. We have to band together. So. It's true. Yeah, yeah. It is true. What would be your, like, fantasy role? I think it already passed me by. I would have loved to have mixed journalism with comedy. I would have loved to have been on The Daily Show you when John Stewart was on it. Don't say that. You could still be the on it. The new guy's good, but I mean, I feel like... And, but here's the thing. W- there's a new guy on there, so that means there's new possibilities. That's but, true. You know, Why so can't you it be The Vita Show? Oh, you're so sweet. You know, what's very interesting is when that show, I've met people that work on that show. And what's interesting to me is the only one with real journalism experience was Stephen Colbert. And he was on like two episodes of Good Morning mm-hmm. America. So um, that, I found that very interesting. But I feel like they're more like comics that do fun, funny, haha journalism than the other way around. But that would be something nice. I mean, I feel like doors are opening. I feel like being an ethnically ambiguous person. I don't know if right. you go out for the Mediterranean oh, yeah. and stuff. I feel like doors are opening and I and I hope that I think the the conundrum I've been in as an actor and it's not really a conundrum I think it's it's like a thing that you get over it's like a growing pain is that I would often get these because I'm fluent in Farsi I'd often get these roles where I'm in a veil and I'm like the meek wife like you know don't or don't bomb my village or don't bomb my village or you know one of those kinds <laughs> of and I'm not making fun of it or it's just I get those roles and you know those women don't talk so usually my lines would get cut by the time it would air or it would just be like weird or it would just be like, they would just like keep one line in, but it was like a filler or not that I want a million lines, but you know, you, you, you do the work, you audition, you go through callbacks, you get the role and then really, 
So uh, for me, I, I, I feel like I kind of have to do my own thing. I'm starting to do my own things. Um, I started my own fashion and beauty blog uh, that I really like doing, but it's very time consuming, so very Vita.com. I'm also on the radio, LA Talk Radio. I host a show with this crazy character, Cameron Datsker, on Friday night, so that's nice. I feel it's good to diversify. I'm sure you right. diversify yeah. as well, too. But yeah, I mean, I, that would be great. Um, something like that. I'd love to do sitcoms more would love to be on an ensemble, but I feel like sitcoms have really changed. And we kind of discussed that during the break, right. but it's, it's, you know, it's an interesting world that we're in with all the Amazon shows and the Netflix and mm -hmm. all that. I'd love to get in on all that. I mean, I, I think there's some great roles for women. There's, um, you know, Orange is the New Black and just tremendous yeah, shows. Show. I love yeah. Show. Yeah. So. I, I was very close to having a sitcom. Um, and you mentioned Lisa Kudrow before, and uh, I used to do a show on HBO called Dream On, mm. and Kevin Bright. I remember that. I, yeah. um, you were on that? Yeah, I was. Dude, I remember that show. Yep. What I was played it about? Sylvia Andrews, the patent attorney from Baltimore, Maryland, oh. and I was uh, Eddie Charles' girlfriend. Um, who was the talk show host. So it was Brian Ben Ben and yes, 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 phenomenal, yes, that's a great phenomenal show. Cast. Yeah, yeah. They don't make yeah. sitcoms like that anymore. No. Very it rarely. Was, that was an awesome time and, you know, groundbreaking for HBO, you know, because it was mm. the first time that that had happened. But I get a call from Kevin Bright and he says, I have a new series for you. It's on NBC. It's going to be great. And, you know, this character is perfectly you. And, you know, we really, you know, designed it for you. And, and I'm like, oh, Kevin, that's fantastic. When are you shooting? Oh, you know, well, we start like next week. And I went, um, well, I'm pregnant. And he said, well, that's too bad. And that oh. was Friends. Were you, were you pregnant with Danny? I was pregnant with Jesse, oh, with my Jesse. son. Okay. Yeah, see, oh. you know, that's because Jesse lives in Florida. Yes. Well, that's because. No. No, 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 no. Victoria's Secret was with uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've As lost two major been. jobs in my life due to my As children. Turtle but, you gets know. very excited I do. at the mention of that. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turtle thinks that I'm just like gross. Yeah. So he I does. Mean, I don't find her attractive. Uh, I find Danny attractive. Yeah, um, I'll cut your <laughs> Way limbs. attractive. I don't. But yeah. you know what? It's because I work with her. It's yeah, weird. Yeah, you know, we're kind of like, you know. I'm not sexually attracted to her. She's still attractive. I'm her daughter and I know she's attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. And, see? That, and that's what makes me attracted to you. See? Oh. <laughs> wow. It all comes around. <laughs> this is <Yes>. something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is something. It's something. It's an experience. Thanks, Turtle. Thanks, it is Turtle. an experience. It's an experience. You, you all are a great experience. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, this is live broadcasting at its best. Yes. I can talk today. By the way, we are broadcasting at Park Place Cali, uh, parkplacecali.com. Uh, that is where you can go and check out a cornucopia of electric cars. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, and you can rent the place for events as well. I just There's, found that out. Yeah. There's all sorts of magical things that happen here. Very magical. Um, yep. We'll have Armin. Did Armin leave? He better not have left. He might have left. We, we might have him on. We will see. But uh, I digress. Um, yes, you do. Let, let's Incredibly talk more so. about me. No, <laughs> no. You know, I feel like this has just been the turtle show today. <laughs> As and it should always yeah. be. As it should always be. You know, be. he got so distracted with Jamie being here. I think he's so. such a massive car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Major like every Gross. kind of distraction you could get, you had. I yes. had. And I, yeah, and it was and Billy I West and, and Jamie okay. Pellington. Yeah, yeah. Just, Voiceover like, distraction, them. blonde girl distraction. Blonde yeah. singer girl is. Is that it? Yeah. Is, that's why you don't find me attractive. Is that I'm not blonde. You know what? That could be it. That's it. Holy shit! I think we found out. Yep, that's it. And not that I, not that I have nothing against brunettes or anything else, but I, be, you know what? I've been on a blonde um, ambition Kick? tour. Yeah. Oh. Blonde <laughs> ambition tour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, He's I mean, well, living in Southern California. I mean. Yeah. Turtle's lonely. Right. You know, it's funny about blonde people. I was at an event. I can't remember what I was at. And I'm like, oh, that blonde girl over there. And I think I was with my sister. She's like, which one? There's like 50. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling her about like, oh, I have met this person. I don't know if she's going to remember me. Which one? I mean, I, it doesn't really occur to you until you're, you know. I think right. we stand out a little more. We do stand out. Yeah. You, it's funny is, you know, you don't, you don't look Middle Eastern. But I have the schnoz. I look more Middle Eastern than you do. I have the shots. You have the great coloring, though, but I, and I have the eyebrows. 
My family's from the northern I part of Iran. I plucked the heck out of my ear. Oh, really? My family's from the northern part of Iran, which is near Russia, so that mm-hmm. could be it. So yeah, yeah, you have the very light so it's, it's hard. I have to like really. I hate to use this term, but I really have to like muzzy it up for those roles. So mm-hmm. I get like the really like ethnic veils. Like mm-hmm. I have some of those stockpiled. Like when my relatives go to the Middle East, it's like a whole setup. It's like a called a chador whatever so I had one of those and then I had I used to use um, really dark foundation problem is that when it's hot in Southern California it smudges yeah, and oh. smears yeah, so I don't really do that anymore but I, I feel like I shouldn't really try for that there's other things now I think nowadays there's more ethnically ambiguous like mm-hmm. you know you could be somebody named Sarah or Mandy but it doesn't mean that you're like an American person right. so there's a lot more of that going on luckily for those in the commercial world much more so but hopefully I think it'll blend in for us theatrical yeah, people so it's true yeah. when I was uh, starting out in in the uh, television world I I used to be on a show called Miami Vice and mm. every week I played a different character. I was Jamaican and Puerto Rican and I would have loved to see Max know. Jamaican. Jamaican, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yaman. Yeah, Jamaican me crazy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's crazy. Too that would not work nowadays. Well, I have very very, very curly hair. This is oh. like two hours of straightening. So yeah, when my hair is curly and it was the eighties, you know, it was all about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was mulatto and, you know, I, Roman. I, I was everything on that show. I was, my, uh, my title on my trailer, on my honey wagon, um, was Max the Hooker. Hilarious. Yeah, because they were, like, pimping me out for every role. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> that's, that's how my life went. Have you played a hooker before, Turtle? I would love to. Maybe I can get laid. No, I no. said played a hooker. Oh, played a hooker. Well, pretend laid. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'll take I played a hooker once, but I was like a very charactery hooker. It yeah. wasn't like sexy hooker lady. It was like you know, like very ghetto charactery, like hooker for probably like a boring old man. Kind I can of. I can see you on on the corner. It wasn't like a baboon <laughs> hooker. I, I was a very that. sarcastic hooker, you know, coming up to the car. Well, you're I mean, a who comes mo- up to the car anymore? I think <laughs> no, hookers are too that. advanced for that nowadays, yeah. right? Or it's probably yeah, they have app, agents. Like a hooker app. <laughs> hookers exactly. have agents now. They're flying to like you know Dubai yeah but those are really high class hookers <laughs> I was a really low rent hooker and they put me in like a this was like this is dating me but this is like I don't know well over 10 years ago when they had like Gucci was really popular they had like the Gigi belts mm-hmm. and I had like a, they put me in like a fake Gucci skirt and I'm like this is really cheesy and they're like you're a hooker and this is a really bad <laughs> yeah. part of downtown so we're gonna put you in this skirt and I'm like this is a really ghetto fake skirt and they're like you're really concerned with the clothing hence the reason why I have a blog so I you know I, I started out working in the Dow Jones I was a retail I covered re- I, I hate to say fashion I hate to say retail because I think of like working in a store but I covered the retail beat I covered the fashion because a lot of people were like how come you get invited to all these places like I got invited to New York Fashion Week but I didn't go because they wouldn't pay me enough to cover me going mm-hmm. yeah that's a conundrum you're in when you do the independent stuff and a lot of girls were like I don't get it how come you get to go what is it about you that you get to go people don't understand that you like have a background in things when you've been doing things for a while so that's the conundrum I'm in but I worked in Capitol Hill I was a journalist there I still do journalism but I feel like it's it's funny that Billy West has these problems that people are cheap you know Mm -hmm. the studios are cheap I find that everybody nowadays there's so many people doing things for nothing like the Huff Post articles that are like little novellas people are like giving it up for free so it's like it's it's getting harder for the rest of us that are skilled and that have backgrounds so that's that's something I've noticed, but I'm thinking if I'm going to do it, at least I might as well do it for myself rather than others. So right. that's that. But um, yeah, I, th- I just feel like the media has changed as well, too. So. And where can people find this blog at? SoVeryVita.com, and it's on Facebook and Twitter under SoVeryVita. But mostly I'm very active with the Facebook and I'm very active with the So Very Vita. But I find that I'm always behind because I'm a real fussy bucket. And I notice a lot of these bloggers, they write like two sentences, they put up filtered, you know, Instagram photos. No, I like write a novella. So that's that's my conundrum with that. But yeah, I'm, I prefer the acting more because it like you actually make money and you have a union. It's like what Billy said, supporting you, right. which is which Sometimes. is so important. <laughs> Sometimes they support us. Sometimes I'm, I'm when they little, want to, when they want yeah, to. I'm a little disturbed with all of the deferred pay now. You know, they're And doing, the new media, you can just yeah, stick it I'm under just, a new media contract. I don't like that. I don't like that. I think that there's, you know, we really need to stand up about that. Well, there's definitely the haves and have nots. It's definitely um what is it? Like a like a caste system. Mm-hmm. I think some people they it works for certain people. 
nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Right. But it affects like the middle class actor mm -hmm. and the lower class actor. So I think those people are uh, like much more affected because isn't it that if you make like a, a six figure salary, you pay the same amount of dues as like somebody that makes like millions and yes. millions of dollars. Yes. So that, well, like, I think there's there's a level, but they um, but it, it's definitely hurting us. Yeah, you know? totally. It's like totally high school all over again. Yeah, and there's so, so many, um, you know, ultra lows and, you know, low budgets now. And and all of the main actors are going for that because, you know, we all want to stay working. Everybody wants to work. You know, it's you know I did a short did film week. and I'm shocked that, like, I could have gotten even more names, but it didn't work with their schedules. Um, so we had to, you know, recast the roles. But I got, I'm sure you know Jean Mac. Mm -hmm. She was in Strangers in a Book. She plays a great character, Bettina. Uh, Christy McGinnity Gibble from Little Women LA. Oh, nice. She's so cute. She was in the film too. I had some other great actors, Kristen West, Carl Bressler, who was in The Usual Suspects. Some really great actors. I was very blessed. I mean, they're also friends of mine, but that was a great experience. The guy that wrote the short, it was his first short. His name is Pedram Navab. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. He's a male model. The first novel he wrote is nominated for a pushcart prize in literature which is like one of the most prestigious prizes for wow. independent writing so it just speaks to this guy's experience but there were some other great actors involved in that Kristen west marv blavelt i don't know if you oh, know yeah, these. I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they're wonderful I yeah yeah him. so i was very blessed to have them on that that just uh won best gorilla short at aof and um, it's going to be screening at Fantastic, and it's up for some nominations there. Also, uh, Seeking Valentina with Kristen West again, Ali Bavarian, uh, Armin Nasseri wrote and directed it. He's a great talent. That's going to be screening at Fantastic along with Natural Born Filmmakers. I'm sure you're going to know a lot of the people that are at Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 Matt Chasen uh, handles a lot of those. Yes, yes, and Matt is my manager. So, yeah. you know, big shout out to Matt for all his yeah, support. Yeah, we love but, it. Yeah, so that's that's an ex it's an exciting time. I'm very excited about that. I'm also going to be working on some other projects. Uh, I want to do more of my own thing. Like I have a very interesting family story. My dad lived to be over 100. I'd love to write something about my dad. My dad was a very smart guy, but he was also a very and I'm not saying this because he was my dad. He was a very sweet soul, and I'd love to do something. You know, people are very curious. My dad was a mathematician and scientist about his life, so I'd love to do something about that. But you know, you're just doing so many things. And now that I'm getting back into media, it's, it's very challenging to, to make the time. But when you make the time, it's, it's rewarding. I'm also going to be working on a project with a great uh, award-winning indie filmmaker, Artur Thomas J. Churchill. I'm very excited about that. Me too. So, yeah, yeah. So very, very excited. And yeah. I want to work with you on something one well, day. Well, I think we actually might be working on something together with Tom. Oh, very so. nice. Very well, excited. I mean, aren't you supposed to be, I, I want to work with you, Turtle? No? No. No. No one wants to work with me. No. This is bullshit. Well, you, you only <laughs> like blondes. I, well, for now. <laughs> it's a tour. It's a blonde ambition tour. So are you an actor too, Turtle? No, I'm oh. just a person. You're just a, oh, <laughs> just a just, civilian. I just live my life. In this world. Yes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever I want to be. I can I, I can act. As a matter of fact, I've been uh, wanting to d direct myself in my own film. You should. I should. I'd write what, my own What would things. that be called? Already Turtle. No, no. I already, already have the premise and everything. Yep. Are you well, ready? Are you going to share it? Is everybody sitting down? Yes. Okay, everybody that's standing up, now sit down. Okay, perfect. The hipster detective. Is that Boom. a little too on the nose? No, it's... That's why. It's are you going to wear a pork pie hat and an ironic no. t-shirt and walk around Silver Lake? No, no. No, it's going to be a fedora. It's oh, gonna excuse me. It's going to say detective. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, I need a drink. It's going to be hilarious. Really? And there goes Danny running. <laughs> yeah, she just, she, that idea. Yeah, she's, she's like, like horrible. I'm running away from No, this. She's, she's calling her agent. <laughs> she can't handle it. No, she's like, she I'm calling my agent. I need to get on the hipster she, detective She can't immediately. handle the, the irony of the title. She can't, she can't <laughs> That's do That's what makes it so amazing. But you have all these technical skills. I'm sure yeah. that that would be That's why it's good like for I, you. I can do all this stuff and... Just do it myself. I you have to take more photos than once a month and put it on your right. social media. I know, I know. Turtle, have you ever had this stuff? Yeah. Aloe pulp. I love aloe. Did you just burp in the microphone? Yeah. Yeah. And a hush falls <laughs> over the air. <laughs> it was a natural thing. We all that's burp. Just, that's not nice. What am I supposed to do? It's almost that like he did nice. it on cue. Yeah, well. I did it. I it was, when it was an accident. It. But this stuff is um, really interesting. Pomegranate aloe pulp juice. It's like pulp. little balls of mm. aloe. Interesting. Yeah, I almost choked on it. 
I feel like you got to put it on your hands as like a lotion I or know, something. Right? <laughs> when I think of aloe, it, 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 I you think two can do that. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll, well, we're Middle it. Eastern. Oh, That's God. what we do. It's all about the aloe. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, really? She's like, I've really been around aloe. like all American people. I grew up, yeah, I was born and raised in Maryland and it's like the, yeah, I don't know if this is a slam. It's not meant to be. I grew up with like the waspiest people in the world, like the Muffies and the Chads. Like there was always like so many Chads in my classes. <laughs> and like the last names were all like Mick something or O something. And they're like, oh, those are Irish people. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? I guess because they're, right. most of them are you British You were probably descent. darker when you were little and then you just faded because Marilyn maybe but I was always very <laughs> fair but I really stuck out like nobody could pronounce my name I, that would be like a it was like a Persian my so-called life <laughs> except I didn't have like a cool gay friend like that guy <laughs> now that's oh. now that's a TV series Persian my so-called uh, life. I know yeah. that's if I can sit down and write it. <laughs> and I know all these big Middle Eastern actors not to be a name dropper because I've interviewed them when I was on Persian TV for five years but I could probably do it if I get my act together but I feel like with my family and my my upbringing it's got to be like perfect yeah. or else I'm not going to do it like it's got to be like right everything has got to be the same with this damn blog like coming up with the name like I'm very indecisive took me forever coming up with the logo took me forever finally my graphic designer girl she's like I'm just going to put something up there and she did so that's okay. I mean I feel like with me like once you get something but it's great to do your own thing but like well you got to get that something going right yeah and I feel like there's no seasons here so we're slow sometimes well, turtle slow. I'm big. Yeah, he's a slow. turtle, but you're the hare. Yeah, so there you but have I'm it. from the East Coast. So oh, where I are you from? I, well, I was born in Philly and raised in Florida. Oh, so you're from the Mid Atlantic, sorta, kinda. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, I hate to cut you short, but um, we gotta go. <laughs> Yeah, it's only been like a five-hour show. Today. I know, I know, I know. We still gotta do our plugs, and we only have one song. Um, oh, no. But thank you for coming on. Oh, sure. And if I can give a quick plug. No, no, Natural too late. Natural no, 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 just, just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, Steve Oakley's film. It just screened at AOF. And the lovely Donna Lee Heising. I don't know if oh, you know yes. her. She's in it. And Gregory Blair, my good friend's in it. And it was just, it was great working with them. And shout out to all these people seeking Valentina, Strangers in a Book. Thank you. Thank you. And excited to be working with you with Thomas Yay. J. Churchill. Woo woo. Love him. I love him. Is and I love Joe. Wings? No, Tom was on our show. The, our last. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I was oh thinking my goodness. of? Uh, Remember, and he was re announcing uh, the you know, the super secret project. Yeah, is this, this a super secret? Oh, this is a super, super secret. secret. It's so yeah. secret we can't even talk about it. Right. It's such a secret. Like hush, hush. It's still, okay. it's still under wraps. So there's, you know. Okay. We have to get contracts before. We <laughs> exactly. We have to sign our lives away. Yeah. Right. It's the way it goes. Okay. So let's hear where I fly when we come back. We're naming the show. Talking with Armin and Danny. And doing our shouts. And doing the shouts. Yep. All that. Thank you so much, Vita. Thank you really so much, you guys. It's been so an much. experience. Yeah, as Thank it should you. be. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> right now, uh, let's hear where I fly and more Torsen Hair experience right after this. Can you get a shot of me with them, like at this angle? 